Alrighty, hello YouTubers. This is going to be a short video on this funky looking flashlight that I've made. I'll start out by saying the obvious. It doesn't run off batteries. It runs off of wall current. And I did that for a reason. This wall current in particular is about 120 volts AC. Alright, this is the business end. I've got 12 LEDs in series. Each of the LEDs is about 10 volts, 1 amp. So 12 of them in series makes for about 120 volts. So basically I tried to match um, the voltage of all the LEDs in series with wall current, which I did. Um, and at 1 amp, that equals about 120 watts. I can run these at a lot higher than 1 amp, actually up to 3 amps before they burn out, but 1 amp is the highest I'm willing to go with this particular light because anything higher I need a bigger heat sink because this thing gets really freaking hot, even with the cooling fan on it. So yeah, you can see I got the heat sink here, cooling fan. The cooling fan is run by this 14 volt power supply, there's a switch right here, so I can turn it on and off whenever needed. Now, the reason I did the, uh, the LEDs this way was because I wanted to cut out the current limiting resistor. Normally when you run an LED, you, you need a resistor, a current limiting resistor, because uh, if the voltage goes ever slightly too high, um, it allows too much current to go to the LED and it will burn it up. It will just burn it right up. So the reason you put a resistor in there is to drop that excess voltage and to limit the current going to the LED. But I have no such thing in this setup. No current limiting resistor. And it is extremely efficient this way. And I'll tell you exactly how it works. <clears throat> All right, you have the current coming in from the wall, going to the flashlight. All right, the first place it goes, um, the hot side of the wall current, goes to this, and this is a thyristor. Basically it's a uh, variable resistor, but it's not a normal resistor. Basically it's a, it's a configuration of diodes in there. And so there's, there's really no resistance whatsoever. So this thing is variable. It's extremely bright, as you can see. I'll show you some more shots of it in a little bit. And let me explain real quick here what a thyristor does exactly. All right. I should brought a clipboard with me. <laughs> Try and hold this with my foot. Okay. So here you have. Alternating current. What a thyristor does is it takes sections of that alternating current, only sections of it, and allows it to go through. So what it ends up looking like is this. Up, down, up, down. And it's still, <clears throat> it's still alternating current, it's just not smooth. It's, it's choppy, as you can see. Now, when it comes out of the thyristor, I have it going to a full wave bridge rectifier. And of course what that does is it changes alternating current into direct current. But since it's choppy like this, what the bridge rectifier does, the full bridge rectifier, is it, let me put a little positive and negative here, <coughs> it changes it into this. So basically, it changes those uh, alternating pulses into direct current pulses. So pulsating DC after it comes out of the full-way bridge rectifier. Then from there, I have the current being sent into a uh, an induction coil. And basically, that just kind of smooths it out just a little bit. It makes it not so pulsating. Now, hold on one second. Got my daughter here. 
Say hi, Lily. I'm trying to see what I'm doing over here. When you adjust the thyristor, come here, Lily. Let's go play with your toys. When you adjust the thyristor, what that does, as far as far as current wise, is it makes these little sections that I've showed you, it makes them thicker and thicker and thicker. So basically, it's taking fatter and fatter chunks out of that alternating current. And when you have it turned all the way up, the thyristor, it completely lets all of that alternating current through. But remember, that alternating current, or pulsating alternating current, is being sent to the full wave bridge rectifier, which is turning it into DC. <clears throat> and then to the induction coil, which is smoothing it out just a little bit. Now, <clears throat> normally in a smoothing circuit, you would use a smoothing cap or a capacitor. That works very well. Um, I thought about using that, but that would actually be a form of heat loss, energy loss. And uh, this works actually pretty well the way it's set up right now. Um, so that's how the power gets to the LEDs. That's how it changes from alternating current into uh, partially smoothed out pulsating DC. Now you can't really tell. I mean, when you have it turned on, you really can't tell this pulsating. And it works out pretty great. Um, all right, I already showed you the switch, which is for the fan. I'll take you to the other side of this thing <clears throat> and show you. I have a cheap little multimeter set up here and it's uh, it's in series with the uh, the current going to the LEDs. So that way I can tell exactly how much current is going to those LEDs. And I usually want to keep it below one amp. And the reason for that is because when it gets above one amp, even with the cooling fan on, the uh, the heat sink tends to become really hot, start to overheat. So I usually keep it about below one amp. <clears throat> and you see how bright it is. It's it's during the daytime right here, and so it's pretty bright in my living room. But this thing, the light coming off of this makes everything else look pretty dark. It is quite bright. Turn it back down for now. Let me show you a shot of it shining here on the wall. So as you can see, it is insanely bright. Let's get a look at it from a little bit farther away. So that's it. Tell me what you think of this bad boy. I'm trying to think of it, if there's anything else I forgot to mention. There is one really cool fact. Um, it's all the way down on low mode right now. And I measure the voltage and the current going through the uh, LEDs on this. When it's turned all the way down like this. And the voltage ended up being about 70 volts. The current was extremely low in the milliamps 
it ended up being about 0 0.067 watts of power and where we're living right now we pay about nine cents per kilowatt hour so calculating that out it ended up being uh, about five and one quarter cents per year if I kept it on like this for an entire year you pay five and one quarter cents which I thought was pretty incredible and it's I mean it's not putting out a lot of light right now but at nighttime it's more than enough light to be used as um, as a night light if you have it turned on like in our living room it it dimly lights up the whole living room and you can see where you're going so I thought that was pretty incredible that's that's insanely efficient so no power supply running this thing just a thyristor full weight bridge rectifier and a, a uh, induction coil Tell me what you guys think.